Hello, welcome to a post-commentary of a Slate Aspire run I did where I lost my microphone because I have... because I'm just really stupid with audio. We're playing The Watcher. This part's gonna be a long one. We're gonna play the game of can I stay on track on anything this entire video? Let's discover. This is my first time ever playing The Watcher. And, well, because I already recorded this, I already know how this ends, but I'm going to try to pretend I don't. I believe I picked the max HP plus 7 here. Because I don't really care if the first couple of encounters only have, like, one health. Really. They're usually super simple encounters. I don't really need them to be low health. I guess it prevents early game damage. It's just not that big of a deal. So we'll take the plus 7 max HP. This is my first time with the Watcher, so I'm going to talk about how I feel about the Watcher. I don't know how long the Watcher has been out specifically for Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire's been out for about two, three years already. That caught me off guard when I discovered that. So I don't know how long the Watcher specifically has been out, but for me, this is the first time playing. So I'm going to talk about some of the mechanics of the Watcher, even though most of the people watching this video probably already know. The Watcher has stances as their main mechanic, and I found the stances interesting. The two main stances we start with are Calm and Wrath. We enter them through cards. For example, Eruption will let us enter Wrath. While we are in the Wrath stance, we deal double damage and we take double damage. It's a very risky stance to be in. The other stance we can enter with our starting deck is Calm. Calm doesn't do anything when we enter it. It does do something when we leave it. When we leave Calm, we get plus two energy for that turn. I end up picking the Flurry of Blows here because we already start with the ability to enter Wrath and Calm. I figured it'd be pretty decent. Here we can start with a Fiery Blows and then go into Eruption to immediately deal extra damage. Yeah, there we go, me. I'm proud of you. You saw it. I could have went strike on the other one, but I guess it doesn't really matter that much. I believe the strike would have killed the higher health one, but it didn't really matter. We only took five damage. I ended up picking pressure points there. I was originally thinking signature move, but the Watcher has a lot of skills. I'm not sure if I could have been able to make use of signature move because it requires it being the only attack card. Wait. Why didn't I go with signature move? I must have misread it. Because it only works if it's the only attack card in your hand. For some reason, I thought it was like Clash. Forgive me. <laughs> My brain did a stupid thing. Because that, that's what I remember thinking at the time. Was, oh, we'll never be able to make use of, sig of signature move. Because we'll be having a lot of skills. But Signature Move wants us to have a lot of skills. Reading's hard. <laughs> I picked up the study for Insight. Since Insight lets us draw cards. And card draw is always important. Pretty much no matter what card game you're playing. I also picked Talk to the Hand. Just because it turns our attack cards on a specific enemy into adding three block as well. Anything we can do to get block and prevent damage is nice. Attack! 
It's safe to enter the Wrath here, because yeah, he's not going to attack till this turn. And look, we even got Vigilance. We got rewarded. He has to strike first to get the benefit out of Wrath before switching to Calm. Pressure points is a hard card to use when it's the only pressure car pressure point card in your deck. You really want to build a deck with a lot of pressure points. At least from what I can tell. I should, yep, there we go, I use an insight. Get a strike and defend. That three block builds up once you use enough attack cards. Use three attack cards on that enemy, you get like nine block. Nine block's not anything to scoff at in the early game. I went with Retain because it was the most interesting card there. I didn't really want two studies. There might even be turns. For example, if the enemy is not planning on attacking that turn, we can just hold on to Perseverance. And not only do we get to Retain it, but it gets two extra block whenever we re Retain it, so we can use it on the turn we most need it. I was, I was about to say, I better not use Eruption. I, I remember now. This guy will split once he reaches below half health. See, past me knew more what I was doing than current me does. I had a plan after all. I'm always shocked to discover this. Yeah, I should be able to kill. Yep, both of them. The Watcher looks like they require a lot of strategy between how you use stances, which I think has made them one of the more interesting... What are they called? Heroes? Classes? I'm not sure. I like the defect and their orbs as well. I would say, though, currently, I think the Watcher is the most interesting. Not that there's no strategy with the Silent or the Ironclad. The Ironclad is just sort of basic, but you always need a, a basic hero. Never really sure how to... think of the Silent... I mean, I got a really fun win with the Silent in one of my past videos. Check it out. Allow me to pimp my own channel while you're watching my channel.
Oh, sorry. Uh, unupgraded talk to the hand starts with two block. Upgraded talk to the hand is three block. Just to fight with some louses. Not very difficult enemies to face. I should strike one of them here to get... Yep, there we go. Not like I could have really done anything else. Pressure points says they lose HP, not take damage. So it gets through the block. I don't have a lot of scry cards, so weave isn't very good. Battle him should be the right choice. But is it? Stay tuned and find out. See, a situation like this is where Perseverance is perfect. Since I don't need the block, I don't need to play it. So by not playing it, it will get two more block. And I can save it for a turn when I need it. Here's the problem with not... Here's the problem with entering Wrath without any reliable way of getting out of Wrath. I really needed a way to get Calm to avoid taking 28, it would be 14 instead. I should play, yeah, the evaluate. Do I play the defend? No, that's right. Because every time I play a skill, his, the, his strength goes up. So it's best to just take my lump. Little lizard tail. I'm sure well, that won't come into play at any point. I didn't spoil anything by saying that. Shut up. I'm good this game. I don't need the lizard tail. I mean, do you guys see my previous videos? I, they're all winners. If you don't believe me, watch them all. And don't just skip to the end. That's mean. I avoid the trap because I don't know what the trap will do. And I'm about to fight an elite. Then after fighting the elite, yeah, I get so rest, but I like to go into bosses with as much health remaining as possible, especially with a deck that doesn't have that. Actually, I guess this deck has a decent amount of defense to it. Mark is a debuff, so it gets negated by Artifact. The Talk to the Hand effect also counts as a debuff on them, so it's best to just hit the first sentry with it.
Just use that here to get as much defense as possible. Plus, I gotta start learning to use all my potions. That's a thing I never ever remember to do. Hoping to fix that. Oh right, I forgot I had the Mercury Hourglass. I forgot I had the Mercury Hourglass while I was playing too. A smite here will kill it. The pocket watch will be a relic? Is that what they're calling this game? It'll be a relic I will constantly forget I even have. We take the empty fist. It's a way to get out of stances. And exiting your stance does count as switching stances, I believe. So it also works with flurry of blows. We pretty much need ways to exit out of wrath. Is what I was thinking at the time. We play less than three cards previous turns, so Pocket Watch draws us a whole bunch of cards. If I'm playing properly, no, keep it. I think I just didn't know how Scry worked at this point. If I wanted to discard it from the top of my deck, I would click on it and hit OK. I figure the 32 isn't lethal, so we just take it. Should have used the talk to the hand first, but you know, ordering. Ordering is for the people who think. Yeah, see, there, there I go, forgetting it again. Thankfully, the wrong order didn't really matter at that point. Pressure points is a skill, so it won't proc the ones. And I get my block before the thorns triggers.
Things are looking pretty dicey. I think it's time we evaluate this situation. Yeah, having all these retained cards is making things pretty difficult. Smite is probably better than most damage cards in my deck at the moment. So keeping a smite and probably skipping something like a strike isn't really that big of a deal. The thorns here prove very dangerous, and he's going to deal 18. I only have so many attacks. Although, because of Talk to the Hand, I guess I'll only be taking one thorn damage instead of the full three. Doesn't really matter what I end up playing there. They both would have killed the boss. Scroll I don't think is that great for our deck because we have so many retained cards. It's hard to draw cards until our hand is full, and even if we did, we can't really play them afterwards. We don't really create... Actually, we do technically create smites thanks to battle him. So I think I consider taking that uh, upgrade created cards card, that power. It would probably it would probably upgrade insights as well. But I end up going with four Deus Ex Machina because it's the only way I can win this round. This run of Slay the Spire. I go with the coffee one, because I think this deck is defensive enough it shouldn't need to rest that much, hopefully. I already did a silent run where I couldn't see enemy intent, and considering that Wrath really requires me to be able to see enemy intent to know when to use it effectively, I decide not to take that one. And because of cards like Insight that allow me to draw more cards, I should keep my options open to be able to play six more cards per turn. I have enough powers, so I think the energy should replace the powers. The power potion. I go with Protect. It's sort of the same idea as Perseverance. Just save it for a turn where I really need to defend, since it also has Retain.
I'm double checking here to see if the mark would go through, and the answer is yes, because it says specifically attack damage, and mark is not attack damage. I should not have wasted a miracle to play that strike, but I think at the point, I think at the time, I for some reason thought it was at one more hit until its flight went down. That ended up being wrong. So that was just purely a misplay. Trigger blows even at half damage will still kill that one. No. Oh, you you should have attacked the 12... The one hitting you for 12. When you hit one and... When you knock down their flight, they also get stunned so they can't damage you. Turn that bird into turkey. I take a second to talk to the hand. I think it's a rather useful card. I don't know if it is actually. I just like the idea of turning all my attack cards on a specific enemy into something that also gives me block. Any amount of extra block I can get is extremely helpful, especially since I can no longer rest due to the, the copy relic. Caffeine is a bitch. Way to go, me. I didn't even see that. To be fair, I'm not paying the most attention. I shouldn't have used that miracle. I should have just taken the four. But since I used it, I might as well play Perseverance here. The talk to the hand does stack, so attacking with talk to the hand twice on an enemy will make it so you get four. Although here, I think I made a mistake in splitting them up. That's why I also took the second talk to the hand, because when you kill an enemy that you uh, put the block return on, and there are still other enemies that you did not play talk to the hand on, they won't give you the block return, as the game put it from what I saw earlier. So being able to have extras to put it on enemies you know you'll have to do still deal with in the future is nice. Or if you're fighting one big enemy, then you can just stack talk to the hand on them. I 
I wanted to try being fancy by splitting them up, but I think that might have been the wrong choice. I toss to defend to look for more damage cards, like Eruption. Which actually isn't going to help me out here. Why am I willing to take 30? Ah, oh, there we go, that's why. Insight, it gives you that draw power that you need. We take Crescendo as just a quick way of getting into Wrath whenever we need to, if we could deal the extra damage on a turn where the enemy doesn't intend on attacking. I think here, Holt could have been pretty cool, but, you know, I know what happens later. So, uh, that item I picked up may or may not be very good. Maybe it saves me, who knows? This cleric's being a meanie and deciding to also attack me. Sorry, Mystic. I keep wanting to call it cleric. But they are a mystic. Braille is a very annoying status effect for me. For all the status effects that the enemies can put on you, Frail is the one that bothers me the most. Weak is annoying, but I think it's fine if I can't deal that much damage. Having my block reduced is kind of frustrating because I need to be able to defend myself and protect myself from damage since your health carries over. So getting less block with each card is like, uh, it's, it's frustrating. You know, it doesn't break the game, or anything. Nothing to that extent. Just if I had to pick one I liked the least, it would be Freyo. I mean, there's already vulnerable. Do you need to make me frail? Speaking of annoying, I find this enemy combination to be very annoying. Mostly due to the fact the Mystic can heal both of them for 16. If the Mystic can only heal one of them for 16, this fight would be fine. Not that this fight is awful. Just probably one of my least favorite enemy combinations. I already have 23 block. We took out the Centurion. The Mystic shouldn't be too difficult. You're on your own now. Where's your tank? 
You're like a medic without a heavy. How good are medics without heavies? I actually don't know. I don't know that much about Team Fortress 2. Please don't hate me. And one off. What a troll. Thankfully, the Mystic decides here is the Mercury Hourglass. And there I go. Not using my potions. If only I remember to use my potions. I picked the third eye. The scry is pretty good, especially with all of the insights we could be getting. Being able to choose... What we draw, or rather, discarding what we don't want. Very nice. We can also just discard Flurry of Blows, yeah. Since we can get it back by switching stances. So it's technically like we never discarded anything at all. See? Big brain plays. Since I scried, I already knew that Vigilance would be there. Should you just talk to the hand after switching to Roth? I played the Miracle first to get cards out of my hand, just to make sure I would have enough room <laughs> for Insight. I probably did. Just like to play it safe. Thankfully, defeating the bigger guy will make the minions retreat. So I can just ignore him. This is a stance switching deck, so that upgraded Flurry of Blows should serve us pretty well. Bowling Rush looks like a cool and fun card, but I don't want to have to rely on me facing a bunch of enemies for it to be extra useful. Playing Eruption here would be a mistake. Taking 12 times 3 damage sounds really terrible.
So we should play it safe. Just try to take less damage. Toss the strike. We don't need that. It's a weak card. I don't bother switching out of the stance strictly because I could probably use the two energy later on. I figured it was better to just stay in the stance in case I needed the energy later and had a way to exit calm. If I had just gotten the extra energy there, it wouldn't have been really useful for anything. Yeah, I, I just hey, I do get back to Wallop. The nine plus the talk to the hand block gave me a decent more block that turn. Fest does it. Uh, I believe I take the crush joints. I have a lot of skill cards that I do end up playing, especially the ones that let me switch between stances. So I should end up taking Crush Joint. I don't know. I always end up putting two cards in my deck. Too many cards in my deck. Heal 25 to start boss combats. Pretty good. At the very least, I like it. It helps especially because I can't rest. I'm forced to pretty much smith at a campfire. I think that was a lucky pickup. Switch to damaging him. I think because he had less HP and he was the more dangerous one. I have second thoughts about that. That was a weird play for me, especially since I didn't even play talk to the hand on that one.
Oh, no way. If I play Crescendo, I get back the Flurry of Fists, and that actually would have been lethal, I believe. Should have been. More Flurry of Blows. More Talk to the Hand. I want both. I want both of these. They kind of play to what I want to do. I don't even remember if I take either of them. Third Flurry Blows. I think I probably should have went for another Talk to the Hand. Honestly, I completely missed what I bought there. <laughs> like, I was staring at the screen, but I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> oh, I think I ended up picking up a, a second wall up. Yep, yep, yep. Talk to the Hand is a good name for a card, by the way. Yeah, come on, me. Put some hair on your chest. Fight the elite. Down with the elite. Oh, okay, I have vigilance, so... Alrighty, fair enough. I can even miracle into vigilance. Still, all of them deciding to attack. Feels bad. I forgot to play Flurry of Blows there. I also shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have Empty Fisted there. I should have done, like, I did that one previous, like, not literally just a previous fight, but in an earlier fight. I should have just stayed in Calm. Then if I exited Calm later, I could have had that mana, uh, the energy. And it would have been more useful then rather than just getting extra energy on a turn. I didn't really need it. And since it wasn't even fatal damage, kind of didn't even matter. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like that play looking back at it. Fortunately, Talk to the Hand does not do enough damage to defeat the guy on the right. So I'm just going to have to take five. Wrath is cool. Wrath is just cool. I really like how it makes you really think differently about how you play your cards. I pick Prey because I was praying for this run to go well. You can't see it by making a face at my mirror. I do that every time I make a dumb joke, even when I'm recording a video where you can't see my face. Yeesh, 27 cards in deck.
There's just so many interesting cards, and this is my first time playing the Watcher. I, I want to try out all these interesting cards. 15. And boy, was the RNG not nice to me. A lot of these cards went up in cost. Battle Hand being 3. Pressure Points being 2. Talk to the Hand being 2. Perseverance is 3. Perseverance is retained, and the cost is not randomized per turn. It's whenever you draw it. So the cards that are retained will stay the cost that I got them at. Thankfully, Talk to the Hand is working out well for us. Obviously, I'm not going to play Eruption here. That'd be bad. Uh, Wallop went up to three. Evaluate went up to three. Flurry of Blows went up to two. One of the insights went to one. Just, just not being nice to me today. Or this fight. I don't even know why I'm saying today I did this much. <laughs> I recorded this days ago. I can pretty much play whatever I want. I already have more than enough block to take this 8 damage. At least protect Stata too. The Perseverance being 3 is aggravating. Blurry Blows is at 3. Hooray! These miracles do make it easier to play these cards. Of course, Crescendo went up to three. They can end up being zero, I believe. I think I've seen it before. They just all decide to increase in cost. Look at that, just lucky. More like just unlucky. Miracle even went up to one. <laughs> Thankfully, Wrath gives me the lethal. I have miracles. I mean, I, re I really, really should be using my potions. I always feel so dumb when I have to discard one. I just keep forgetting they're up there. It's a card game. I only focus on the cards. The potions matter a lot. They will save you. I just like to save them for when I'm in the most danger. Meditate. Meditate. Meditate sounded pretty cool. But we go with Sands of Time. Here's where that one relic that gives me 25 health back ends up being pretty important. I'll be fighting with 38 health instead of 13. So that makes up for not being able to... Oh yeah, I picked that for the innate. It makes up for not being able to rest. I believe this was my first time facing this boss, so I didn't really know what it did. I don't even think I've seen any videos where anyone faced it either, so I, I was unprepared. I had no idea what to expect. Boss has too much health right now to put a talk to the hand on them, so I decided to just put it on one of the minions because I plan on killing one in order to reduce 
damage coming in, despite the fact that I probably have more than enough to flop, but... Live and learn. Living on the edge of tomorrow. Using both those talk to hands on that one minion kind of ended up giving me some trouble, I believe. I should have at least put one on the boss, since, you know, they're going to be the one I'm attacking the most, considering their health. You have no reason to not play the Flurry of Blows. What are you doing? Huh? See, that one card that would have let us draw until we fill our hand would have been pretty terrible in this deck considering our hand gets so gets full so often. Just because I constantly retain cards I probably shouldn't. I don't need to use the sand at the time. I should just double strike. Actually, I probably should have studied. Study probably would have been better. Since I wasn't in any danger, and since I didn't really have to sands of time, I felt like it was better to just save it, have it be a zero cost, because it will stay that cost the entire combat. Crush joints, there you go. Yep, Vulnerable plus Wrath is a lot of damage. And the boss doesn't plan on attacking. So, free damage. Woo, 72. I gotta, I gotta get out of, I gotta get out of Wrath. Even then, it's 36, but with the block potion, I'll survive it. They're called the Collector, but what do they collect? Yes, use the block potion. Hey, using a potion. Do it. Do it. Okay. Although, unfortunately, I am frail, which makes all my block cards worse. I will survive even without the block cards. But I figure I might as well use them and prevent as much damage as possible. You never know. So now we enter Divinity, thanks to the, all the Mantra we got. I forgot to talk about Mantra. Once you get to 10 Mantra, you enter Divinity. Where you gain 3 energy and attacks deal triple damage. So, you know, there's no reason to enter Wrath while you're in Divinity. That may or may not come in the later. Possibly. Don't look at him in the video. Don't be cheating. Cheaters. Vault, I remember that from one of my ironclad runs. I figure since I already get Mantra from the Damaru, and I also have Prey, that card that gets more damage as I gain Mantra should be better. Brilliance, I believe it's called. Sneko, I would be pretty bad in my deck. Yeah, I go for 
Philosopher's Stone here. I remember in the original commentary, I was talking all big and tough, like, ah, you can all deal one more damage. It's just one more strength. What could it matter? It's not like it's plus three strength. I don't even gotta worry. You guys are weak. But do I walk the walk, or am I just talking some smack for no reason? Is that a scrub quote? Are we scrub quoting now? <laughs> I don't even know why I went up that way, but we did. Five energy. Is it enough? Most people would probably say yes, but you can never have too much energy. They all plan on blocking, so we shall enter crescendo. Brilliance should be more, yeah, brilliance is more damage than wallop. And I figure I should split up the damage, since they have that lifelink ability. So you kind of want to try to kill them all as close to each other as possible. Mm. 48, 68. Okay, it wouldn't be lethal, but so much damage. They won't resurrect this upcoming turn, but they will resurrect on their next turn. But I should have the damage to knock this guy out before it even matters. Yeah, I even toss the defense card just to make sure I get as many as much damage as possible. Although honestly, I probably didn't even have to play the extra cards. I could have probably just played Sands of Time. I debate whether I should get Cut Through Fader here or not. I do end up getting it, just because of the fact that it replaces itself. Still, now we're at a 30. But you know what? 30 is just not enough cards. Actually, I don't even remember if I... I don't even remember if I grab a card here. I probably grab that other Talk to the Hand. But we'll see. Alright, me, what do you do? I look at the Prismatic Shard and I thought about it, but I figure at this point it's too late in the run, and I already did an Ironclad run where I try using it. Oh yeah, I believe I pick up the Tranquility here. Just as another way to exit Wrath as an emergency. I should remove a card from my deck. I do, okay. I do have the time. It's time to beat a run as the Watcher. That's the time, Merchant Man. I end up missing out on one miracle, which is unfortunate.
I think that I ended up killing accidentally, because even me, right now, the, in, the, in the present, I'm like, wow, I'm surprised I killed him that turn, and I was expecting him to take damage. Even though that one card does draw me a card, it all, I also have to spend energy on it. Even though I do have five energy, even though, even though, even though, I have the five energy, I'd rather try to conserve it, I, plus I already have the upgraded version. The upgraded version also allows me to draw a, to scry three, I apologize. Scrying that three allows me to better pick what card I will draw. I can end up discarding two of the cards I don't want to guarantee drawing the card I do want. If I have it on the same turn as an insight, and I want all three, I can even just play it, find out, oh, I do want all three, and then play insight afterwards so I can draw all three. I buy the fire potion just as emergency damage. I take the 17 heal. I kind of am disagreeing. I think losing the 4 max health wouldn't have been the biggest deal there. I probably should have just went along with that. This guy has an effect where every time you play a card, he gets one stack of slow added to him. For every stack of slow, I believe all your attacks deal 10% more damage. So being able to play all of your skills before you play all your attacks, I do believe is the most optimal. Tranquility has retained, so I can switch out of Wrath pretty much any time I want. It does exhaust after use, so that is one thing to keep in mind. See, I can toss the Flurry of Blows. I should use Empty Fist here instead. Please tell me I use Empty Fist here instead. Thank you, me. The Empty Fist we can't guarantee keeping, so it's better to use the Empty Fist, and then we can use Tranquility later. Lose a second miracle again. How incredibly unlucky. I have enough salt for your fries if you want some.
I think I ended up playing that, yeah, just to get more hand space. This might will be created and then I draw five. I say draw five and then draw three insights. You need some insight, I got some for you. Sir, I'm still here. I don't plan on leaving yet until I get my customer service. I can tell he works in customer service. Look at those eyes. Those are the eyes of someone who's like, I was just about to go on break and then this guy ended up showing up. What a pain in my ass. I know this face well. Oh boy, 82. No, 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 no. I think that ended up being a misplay. Actually, nah, it doesn't look like it mattered. Okay, it didn't matter. It was still wrong. It's just that being wrong there didn't matter. But sometimes it does, and we must learn to recognize our mistakes, even if they don't screw us over at that instance. Oh yeah, I already gained my one curse for this run, so that relic ends up being pointless. There is no reason not to pick one up, as far as I'm aware. I don't think it makes enemies more difficult the more relics you have. So just pick up a relic when you see one. I skipped the merchant. I doubt he has any cards that are cheap enough for me to buy that'd be worth putting into my 32 card deck. It shouldn't be 32 cards, but it is. I believe I make Tranquility cost zero with my smithing upgrade here. Oh, I forgot I even picked up Empty Mind. I should... Yep, I do. This is so that way I could spend as much energy on attacking with Wrath as possible. Since it costs zero, well, it's free. So I can... Focus on spending energy to deal damage, and then Tranquility at the end. I could have used Just Lucky on a different enemy. The Mercury Hourglass would have killed him. The one in the middle. So that was a misplay. It's easier to recognize these things while I'm watching. The pressure point here really doesn't matter. Might as well just get rid of one artifact. Even though this isn't a very diva focused deck. Oh look, I managed to not draw the, the Deus Ex Machina this time. Way to go, me. Wall up here is actually pretty bad because it only counts unblocked damage, I believe. We'll toss the days. There are so many cards in my deck, I doubt I'll find it.
Oh yeah, we're going for the kill. Yeah, this should be a pretty easy kill. Yep. Didn't even need to do the math on it. Just hit him in the face until he dies. Let's see, it's just another 20 minutes. This post commentary is almost done. Man, this is so hard. <laughs> pick up the car of reality just as more damage. More damage, less problems. I might as well just lose the gold here. I don't even think there's any more merchants after this. I don't I don't need this gold. Just get the relic, man. I was about to say, do I really agree to take the 16? Then I look and see I have 18 blocks, so yeah, I do. I have thorns. When did I get thorns? It's really hard to pay attention to a post commentary while you're talking about the most random stuff. Just trying to fill the void of silence. I, I really did not even notice I had three thorns. I was going to say Sands of Time kills him, but I guess so do a lot of other cards in my hand at that moment. There shouldn't be any reason to take another card. There you go. Please don't fight this and leave. We gotta save our HP. And again, I suppose, I get more health. I recover health at the boss fight. I don't even know what that boss is at this point. I know what it is now. Anyway, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be singing. Let's players who sing cut it out. This includes me too. I'm a hypocrite. I remember this guy from my silent run. The one I win. I bring that up just to let people know I am capable of winning at this game. <laughs> Here we do not find a way to get out of Wrath. Thankfully we drew Talk to the Hand and Protect. So that will help prevent a bit of damage. Even though since he's intangible and dealing only one damage really doesn't matter. Attacking the ghost does. The nemesis. <laughs> Attacking the nemesis when the talk to the hand is up even when he's intangible doesn't matter. I decided to not use smite the previous turn because they were intangible. I was about to ask, do I have a way to get out of... I do. Thank you, Vigilance. We must stay ever vigilant in all that other jazz. I should use a miracle here to evaluate, just to get as much block as possible. Because I will die.
Or I could get extremely lucky and get, like, water. I should still evaluate you guys, too. I managed to stop a lot of incoming damage thanks to this. Although, that intangible. This is a good time to set up for another talk to the hand, just attack, just specifically to only get. Oh, pressure point here is wrong because that stop intangible does it for all all damage. Not just attack, but thorns burning other stuff. Anything that causes a loss of HP more than just damage. Thanks to all those flurry of blows, we can now pretty much go for the kill. We are at nine. Yeah, I, sh I would say I shouldn't take anything there. Hey, we get to remove our one curse before the boss fight. I forget what I even upgrade here. All right, yeah, let's talk to the hand. There's that one really coming in clutch, helping us restore that 25 HP. I, I was very, very lucky to have gotten that. <laughs> Being unable to rest hurt this run, but healing up bosses helped this run. Am I really going to sit there and take 16? I can't see that being nice. Oh, yes. It is a good thing I use that strength. This is the last fight anyway. Might as well use the strength potion. There is literally no reason not to. I'm trying to split damage as best as I possibly can. I don't think I'm doing it right, though. I'll be taking 19 through this, which doesn't feel good. Sorry, did I say 19? I meant 29. I shouldn't have put that talk to the hand on the boss. I should have focused on... Knocking down the cultist first. Alright, I have Tranquility in hand. I was about to be like, why am I playing that? I have Tranquility, good.
Here, when I was originally playing, I remember thinking I wouldn't have taken damage. For some reason, I thought 8 times 4 was 24. It's not, it's 32. One day, I hope to be capable of math. I'm getting there. Alright, I forgot the boss restored, I believe, 10 health at the end of each of their turns. Or at the start of my turn. It's one of those. Yep, empty fist here. So we can flurry of blows and get the energy and then go back into calm to get the flurry of blows again. Yeah, this ended up being a really fun run. The stand switching made this a blast. Seventy-seven block. Way to go, me. Now we just deal triple damage to the boss. And unfortunately, the rest of my divinity is all wasted. Due to the fact that this boss is about to enter the second phase and I can't do anything else here. I can only pray. I have all this energy, I have all this damage. Can't do anything with it. Feels bad. When I first saw those spikes, I was really terrified he got thorns. Thankfully, the boss did not. The boss did, however, decide they were going to do 42. I can protect Miracle Empty Fist and then Wallop. Try to get as much block as possible. Now, if I remember correctly, I make a misplay here. I'm not entirely sure if I do. I'm trying to see if there's anything I can do here better. I probably could have started with Cut Through Fate. If I had started with Cut Through Fate, I could have gotten Insight, which would have meant I would have had to cut the other two. Actually, I don't think it mattered. Damn. It's 20. He's dealing 20 damage. 13 plus 7 is 20. They've got us. Got me, rather. They didn't get you. You're not the one playing. I'm... I'm the one who got messed up. I'm so disappointed at this moment. I just don't know how to take it. I got so close. There's just unfortunate. I'm, I'm trying to look at my relics. And I'm dead. Except I'm not Lizard Tail! That Lizard Tail. I, I wish I didn't lose the commentary because at this point... I am like, I, uh, obviously I'm not jumping up and down, I'm still able to move my mouth. Mouse. I almost said mouth. I'm still able to move my mouth. It's the one thing I'll always be able to do. I was ecstatic. 
oh, I felt so good. I remember thinking, oh yeah, this game is giving me another chance and I will not waste it. I don't even remember if I used that fire potion now that I think about it. Game is giving me a chance, let's not waste it. Protect wallet. That would protect me from all the damage. And smite. Just to sort of get cards out of our hand. Ha, a paltry 20 damage. I can block that. I decide not to play that prey here. Well, either I decide or I don't think about it. I think I decide not to. I think that's what I was looking at my status effects for. I realized since I get one mantra each turn due to one of my relics, I might as well just wait for the next turn so I can get the plus... plus a whole bunch. Anyway, I have a lot of damage. Let's put this guy down and do it completely wrong by switching to Wrath. For some reason, I thought Wrath and Divinity were the same amount of damage. They aren't. Divinity is three times as much, and it also doesn't give you the damage penalty, but it doesn't matter. We beat the boss! Lizard Tail! Lizard Tail! I completely forgot about it. Uh, finally, we reach the heart of the Spire, the source of evil in this world. I prime the staff with divine energy. We shall attack. And deal 750 damage. This is the reason why I felt like I had to do post commentary. Normally, I would just throw this away and be like, well, it feels bad. But that lizard tail coming in clutch, I felt like I had to keep this. Uh, this. Oh, look, we, got... we unlocked some cards. That's nice. This was hard. <laughs> but hey, you and I, we made it together to the end. Unless you skip to the end to see what would happen. Then I will find you. And I will slap you. And I will sing like Carl Weezer. Yeah, this is the end of, I believe, Let's Just Play Slay the Spire Part 5 with post-commentary. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go do something else with the rest of my night. See ya.